Welcome to the French Cooking Academy Kitchen, everybody. My name is Stefan, and remember, on this channel, we're rotating every month with the recipe. We begin with the starters, and we have a main, then a side, and or dessert. Today, it is the day of the main, and we're going to be learning how to braise short ribs. These are beef short ribs, and not any types of short ribs. I've got my hand here on some amazing quality beef from a local producer, a cattle farmer, and it's not too far from us, and I want to make the best out of this because I've got the utmost respect for these guys working, uh, you know, making all this meat and trying to bring quality stuff in your kitchen. It is so important. So I'm going to be using really classic French culinary methods uh, to cook this really by the book. I'm going to show you all this little technique. Of course, yes, there's going to be a marinade. There's going to be a homemade stock. But for the flavors, I'm going to take this big time to the next level. I'm going to ditch the red wine and use something else if you're curious. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to braising, the first step in French cooking, of course, if you're using things by the book, is to marinate your meat. Let's talk about the meat for a sec. Look at these beautiful short ribs. You can see the marbling here, the bone, the color of the meat. And this is Dexter cattle. It's a Dexter type of meat. It's an Irish breed. And it provides really something that has a, an intense beefy taste that almost kind of resembles aged Beef, you know, when you have aged beef, it's really expensive, except that it's not that expensive. And I absolutely love this. And I think it's going to go perfectly with all the rest of the ingredients we're going to be using for the marinade, carrots, onions or shallots. I've got garlic, uh, bay leaf and thyme. And here, this is some, uh, what we call the fat back sometimes in America. It's the fatty part of some pancetta that I've got in. We're going to roll into uh, parsley here. And you can either use these in the marinade or insert it directly into the beef. And this is what I'm going to show you now. Now this action usually happens for a type of meat that is uh, really lean. And you're going to be inserting lardons, which is a matchsticks of fat, rolled into parsley inside the meat. Now I'm just going to use it here because uh, I just like the sound of the, the technique here. And I just want to show you how it goes really. And this is the reality of the old fashioned and the old way of, of cooking in France. So you first roll your lard, this is pancetta, fatty pancetta, it's smoked and cured. And then we're going to roll these in little lardons and we're going to insert them into the meat. So I'm just going to do one to try it out. So typically, as I said, if you were to have another piece of meat or a short rib that is really lean, like you see that part here, uh, you would actually do that, uh, that larding technique. So all what it is, you take an, a very sharp knife, you're going to make an incision in there. It's a little pocket. And then all what it is, you, you choose any piece of, uh, of this uh, pancetta or whatever, if it's the, the matchstick, and you're going to insert it inside the meat like this. And it's like a little present. So I'm going to put another one here. This is totally overkill for this one because there's so much fat. <laughs> but I just can't wait to have these flavors. Look at that little pocket in here. Up. Put this in there. Now, when it comes to braised short ribs, what you will find 99% of the time on every single recipe is always the same. Braised short ribs in red wine. But red wine is not the only thing you can use when you braise meat. It is the cheaper option, of course, is what's popular because, you know, white wine, red wine, but it pays some time for an occasion to use something else. Today, we're going to be using Madeira wine. Madeira wine is one of my favorites. I like to use sport as well, but Madeira wine is good. We're not going to use the same quantity as wine, though, because, of course, it's more expensive and it's more intense. So for uh, the marinade, what I'm going to do here is to add the elements first at the bottom of the dish here. So some of the uh, shallots I've got here. I'm going to put uh, my bay leaf, a bit of, uh, of the thyme in here, dry thyme, and a few carrots in there. And a few peppercorns, a few juniper, juniper berries. Okay, and then we've got your base. And then I'm going to put my meat here and try to pack it in there. In terms of quantity, how much are we going to be using? Well, I'm going to try to use 150 to 200 ml uh, compared to the usual kind of half a liter of wine that you usually have. And what I'm going to do is I've got a big glass of it here, these colors. And because it's so tight in the dish, it's not going to require much to really saturate the meat and go over. So I think I need a little bit more. I've had barely 150 and it's almost there. So I'm going to add a little bit more. So usually you can put a bit of oil on top to avoid the meat from drying, but you can use like a plastic wrap, a piece of parchment paper, and I've got a lid on there. The most important, we're going to leave this to my You can wait for like five hours or six hours. I'm going to leave it overnight, not a problem. With a lid, I'm going to cover with some parchment paper. and Lid on in there, 
and we'll see you the next day. But before I go, let's talk about the stock. Now that your short ribs are marinating in the fridge, this is a good time to prepare your stock. For this recipe, veal or beef stock is the way to go. Chicken stock can be used as well. So I'm going to prepare my stock beforehand. I'm going to then leave it to set in the fridge. And when I've got all the elements, and by tomorrow, for you it's going to come in a zap, we're going to resume the recipe and start cooking. After a night in the fridge, my meat is now ready. This is the result. I've just opened my little dish here. Look at the color of the Madeira one, the flavors. I've tried a little bit. It's intense, it's complex, it's nutty, and it will go so well with the beef. It oozes complexity and flavor. It's like a very, very good one. The stock, I made it the day before as well. Free cup worth. Look at that. Very wobbly, it's always a sign of a good stock. The thing you need to know about the stock, don't make something too reduced or too intense in taste when you cook with beef because the beef will further color and further infuse your stock with taste. If you start with something too strong here and then cook for several hours with the beef, you're going to end up with a sauce that is way, way too intense. That's for the basic, the mise en place is ready. We're going to be using a little bit of flour for the preparation of searing the meat, which is what's coming next. When I'm ready to start the cooking, the first step is going to be to take the meat out of the marinade or the brine and minimize the amount of juice and remove the garnish as well. So you discard and you scrap the garnish out, you put things onto a separate plate. Next, once you're done, you take a bowl with a sieve and we're going to filter the juice from the marinade through a sieve and you keep all the aromatics behind. For the meat, we have to do something that is quite unfortunate when you use Madeira, but we don't have a choice, is to pat the meat dry to avoid the excess of moisture, otherwise you're going to have that boiled beef effect. Once the excess moisture have been removed, of course, we're going to go with the seasoning, so salt and pepper on each side. I'm using black pepper on here. My short ribs are now seasoned and what I'm going to do here is to roll them into flour. This is going to help to thicken our sauce as we're cooking, give some extra flavor and further dry the meat. So you want to roll the meat into the flour like that and then you're going to be tapping the excess. You don't want like a massive coating, okay? You want something that is lightly dusted in flour. Once you're done with the dusting of the meat, we're pretty much ready to go on the stove. So let's recap what I've got. I've got the short ribs have been seasoned, dusted with flour. We've pat them dry to remove the excess of moisture. I've got the garnish from the marinade with the juices of the marinade on here. And this is some extra fresh garnish of mushroom, celery and shallots. This kind of optional. We want to have the mushroom because it is part of the appellation of the Madeira sauce that we're going to do at the end. And now for the searing. Now I cannot stress enough the importance of Searing your meat properly when you make these types of dishes. The searing has to be done properly. Your meat needs to be colored on all sides. You don't want something that looks like boiled, you want a nice sear. Typically we're going to use oil, but here, because we're using all these particular techniques and the classic methods, we're not going to use oil. I'm going to use this, lard. And the pork fat is going to add another layer of intensity and other types of complexity in your in your dish. You know, the taste of pork a little bit with the fat in here, which is different than standard oil. Now I'm going to place my meat. Now the key when you're searing like this, especially at home, make sure your burner is adequate, like it's big enough. If it's too small, use the larger burner and don't overcrowd your pan when you begin. So within a few minutes, you're going to have a nice coloring. This is what I'm talking about. And the fact of using flour, what I love about it, is that nothing sticks. You see, I can take my pieces of meat, turn them around, nothing sticks. My last piece of meat, I've been seared on all sides. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to remove the fat, clean the pan, and then back on the stove. Now, you may wonder why on earth do you want to clean that pan because there were some pieces of burnt garnish that can bring a bitter taste, and it's just so much better uh, to work like this. But most importantly, because now we're going to use another type of fat because we need to really not sear the garnish, but let it sweat a little bit in butter. You start with the fresh garnish. After a few minutes, we're done here. We're going to follow up with the wet one. So you drain it and all what you had, everything mixed in there. We're going to be raising the heat. And now comes, of course, the marinating juices. We're going to reduce by half. So bring this to high heat and it's reducing time. That's going to be ready. I'm going to reuse the heat. Let's put the meat on. So my meat is here on the side. And as I've said, this is the bed of vegetables and we're going to be adding all this beautiful stuff in here. Now, once the meat is in, as you can see, mine's pretty cramped in there. You're going to warm up your stock to make it really liquid. And we're going to add the stock so it barely 
comes a halfway from it, usually even a quarter is enough. And we're gonna be adding some extra stock if needed while and the whole thing is cooking. Now for the temperature of cooking, you've got a choice. You can spend four hours at 150, 140 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna use here 170, which is a kind of a happy medium. Some chefs use 180 because I don't want to spend four hours waiting for this to cook. And as you can see, there's plenty of meat, but it will shrink and you can see the, the juices and the stock is in here. So all what needs to happen now is a piece of parchment paper to minimize the evaporation, a lid on, and it's gonna be cooking for two and a half, maybe up to three hours. And every kind of hour, I'm gonna look and see how much liquid is in there. If it's too dry, I'm gonna add some more. So lid on, and that's gonna go at 170 degrees Celsius in my oven, I'll put the equivalent on Fahrenheit on the screen, and I'll show you when it's done. After three hours, for me, the meat is ready. Look at this color, it's all caramelized. But the most important for you, you want to make sure that the meat is falling off the bone and that the meat can also be taken apart very easily with a fork. This is the sign it's ready. You don't want to go too far, otherwise it's just gonna be shreds everywhere. But I think this is the sweet spot. And now I'm gonna take the meat out and put it in a tray. I've taken the meat out, it's on the tray, and would you look at these colors? It is sticky, it is caramelized, it is seared, and so tempting to just pick one up and eat it right away. But what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put a parchment paper on top, put this into the oven, keep it warm while we're making the sauce. Now to make the Madeira sauce, it's actually very, very easy, but you can't do this in there because look at the state of the pan and it's tons of fat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour all of these juices, all the caramelized juices in there, filter this through sieve into another bowl, and then we're gonna use another pan to make the sauce. If you want, you can just clean that one and do it in there, but it's just easier to take another pan. Now, chances are that you're not gonna end up with much uh, stock in your pan after uh, the short ribs are cooked. So what I usually do, I add about half a cup of water into the pan, stir the whole lot through, and then pass it through a sieve to have a bit of more base juice, okay? So this is the fond brésage and the really concentrated sauce with the Madeira taste. And this is just the fat that I've scooped off and from the top. This is just beef fat. You can use this to cook steak, uh, sauté potatoes and so on and so forth. And now to the stove to make the sauce. To make the Madeira sauce, as I said, very simple. All what you need is the fond brésage, meaning the cooking juices from the meat, about 40 or 50 grams of thinly sliced shallots, three or four button mushroom thinly sliced, about 20 grams of butter, three tablespoons of fresh Madeira, and to really boost the flavor. And I've got one cup of the stock that I prepared earlier at the very beginning. I had three cups, remember I used two cups and I've got one cup fresh stock ready and that is gonna be ready to give a nice taste to the sauce. Let's make this sauce. It is super straightforward. All what you need to have is a bit of butter in your pan and we're gonna put the shallots and the mushroom. And like we did before, we're gonna let them sweat just for a few minutes, so medium heat. Just a little bit of coloration. Now, if you wonder why we're doing this, because the Madeira sauce, the appellation is always like this, a bit of shallots, a bit of mushrooms, and then you get the rest of your stock to be added to it. So I'm gonna use my fond brésage and just over. So you can see we've got a beautiful coloring. I'm gonna raise my heat, and what I'm gonna do here is to add some extra stock in there. And the reason we're doing this typically is because the fond brésage is always a little bit intense and strong. So having an extra clean stock on the side really kind of dilute the sauce a little bit and tone down the flavor and just balance the whole thing out. And all what needs to happen now is a reduction. If you want more sauce, you know what? I'm not gonna be greedy. I'm gonna use most of my stock. And now we're gonna reduce the heck out of this. So high heat and big reduction. My sauce is now reduced, as you can see. It's just that semi-syrupy consistency. That's all what you want. You can reduce it more if you want. And what we're gonna do from here is simply to add a dash of fresh Madeira. That's the whole little trick, okay? The final touch, of course, always you're gonna be tasting and checking the seasoning. So I'm gonna taste and of course check if there's enough Madeira in. Wow, that touch of Madeira by the end, that's the explosion of flavor. Looks like not much when you look at this. When you taste that, it's a bomb, a bit of pepper. And we're done. That's it, the sauce is served. We can take the meat out, put it on the plate, pour the sauce over and we're gonna be ready. But before we go, I'm gonna do a little tasting, of course. Now, I was aware that the Dexter beef was darker in color, but now when you braise it for three hours, it looks absolutely sticky slash caramelized. And we've got the sauce to go over. So I'm just gonna drizzle some of that. I mean, it's, pff, that is insane. Can we talk about like candied <laughs> meat? 
Mm. Definitely an intense flavor, a sweetness, and that nuttiness from the Madeira melting in the mouth. And you know what? The sauce. <laughs> the sauce. The sauce is crazy. The Madeira sauce is like. What a. Oh, this one is a little bit, a little bit, a little bit tough. Let me try. Mmm. I need to stop this. Oh, mm. Wow. That is exceptionally tasty. I think my palate here went on an adventure of discovery of new flavor and I love Madeira sauce, but I've never really tried it in that context with the beef. And this beef, the Dexter is so dark, sticky, caramelized. With the Madeira, it really comes together. The meat itself, what I would say really, when you eat it, it is intense, but then sometimes there's a kind of a subtleness to it. This is not the classic beef flavor that we always have. But when you add that Madeira wine with the hint of mushroom and that nuttiness, oops, it's an explosion of flavor. It's really like almost candied beef. That's what we can think about. So it takes some time to make, but again, making a recipe by the book, you know, really brings your dish to the next level. And this is how we make braised short ribs with Madeira wine instead of the classic red wine. In my view, it's a welcome addition, but I'll leave this to you. You can try it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And as for me, I will see you next time with another video on the French Cooking Academy. Take care all, bye-bye.